Alright, so what's up guys, um, this is another video tutorial uh, for libgdx obviously and yeah, um, this time it's requested um, uh, and yeah, as you can read, um, can you make a video tutorial about raycasting in Box2D? I'm not able to use raycast callback correctly and we'll do just that, it's already been requested uh, a while ago by Pedro R Rodriguez or whatever you pronounce that um, and yeah, let's just do it. So right here we got a normal screen it's just um, having a world and an orthographic camera and a box of the debug renderer so nothing special um, if you don't know that stuff you should probably watch some videos about that as well um, we resize the camera viewport we render and step the world um, and we just post the stuff that we use um, this here is just a tile map that's been created that has basically nothing to do with it. It's just my way of putting some objects into the world using the Box City Map Project Parser. You can, of course, put create your objects in whatever way you like. It doesn't have anything to do with ray casting. So, um, yeah, what what do we actually want to get? Um, so, I have this little example here that I wrote before, and it's this. So, we have some objects in the world, and we would like to um have a line here and uh wherever we uh draw that line we would like to get this uh, this this normal actually it's a normal of the surface the ray ca the the ray is colliding with and we would like to draw the normal of that collision point on the surface uh what is that useful for well <laughs> the normal is probably not useful for so many things in in your use case but um, you could, for example, destroy the fixture. F so if your, uh, I don't know, your your spaceship shoots lasers, you could destroy stuff that's in the way. Uh, or yeah, you could basically do anything. <laughs> you probably have a reason to use ray casting if you're watching this video. So let's actually get started because all that we have right now is, like I said, just the object, but we can't do anything. So the first thing we want to do is set up that line to then do the actual ray casting. So uh, we would like to at first have two vector twos. The first one is just called P1 for point one, which is gonna be a new vector two. And P2 for, well, the second point. Um, array is not a line because it go goes into infinity. So we just have point one and point two and not start and end. Um, it's probably good idea to uh, make yourself aware of that, to think of that uh, this way. So what else do we want? We want the collision point, so that's going to be a new vector 2 as well. And the normal, also a vector 2. There's a lot of vector 2 going on if you're handling box of these stuff. Um, then we would like to set the input processor to a new input adapter and import that thing of course um, and we are going to use the touch direct method you could also do it with touch down probably makes more sense but touch direct allows me to actually drag this thing and not just touch down <laughs> like the name says I just prefer that so uh, we want to return true in most cases and now well now the actual work comes in uh, this take as a vector 3 this this um, anonymous input adapter here will get a vector 3 called temp f uh, so just th that we are able to use the camera dot unproject method because it takes a vector 3 so let's create a new vector 3 and just set it to the coordinates we get here so screen X and screen Y and 0 the Z doesn't matter at all um, and now we would like to implement it the following way. If I click uh, using the left mouse button, I would like to move point two. And if I click using, uh, or if I drag using the right mouse button, I would like to move point uh, one, yeah. So uh, the ray always goes from point one to point two, and I would like to be able to move them separately. So I just check if the button is pressed, gdx.input or this button pressed, um, buttons dot left then I want to move point two to temp else if gdx dot input dot is button pressed buttons dot right and you should probably spell that correctly 
Um, then I want to move point one. Set to temp.x, temp.y. And um, to actually make some sense, we should probably use camera.unproject on temp so that we are actually unprojecting it and having it in world coordinates. This is why we are using the vector 3 in the first place. And well, this should probably be spelled correctly as well. Um, okay, so now is where we actually want to do the ray casting. But before we do the ray casting, let's just um, make sure all the point 0.1 and point 0.2 stuff is working correctly. Uh, by drawing it using a shape renderer. So here in the render method we want to draw it, but we use uh, we need the shape renderer first. So let's create it. Shape renderer. Uh, let's call it SR for shape renderer. Um, equals a new shape renderer. And this has to be disposed. So SR dot dispose. And now we want to actually use it. So at first we have to set the projection matrix as usual. And we have to begin drawing shape type dot line and end. And yeah, long, let's actually draw the line. So the line simply goes from um, point 0.1 to point 0.2. And that's it. So pretty simple for now. I hope I didn't go over that too fast. But it's since it's not really having to do much uh, with, with uh, the actual ray casting, I just kind of did that very fast. So uh, just a quick view, review of what we did. Um, we made four vectors, the first one, point 0.1, um, point 0.2, collision and normal. We don't use these yet, we just use point 0.1 and point 0.2. So this is wh where the ray starts and point 0.2 is, is just some point where it goes. Um, we implemented some controls so we can actually move them around uh, in the world and um, now we just draw them on the screen so we know what's actually going on. Uh, let's try this out. So with the right mouse button I can set the starting point, point 0.1, and with the left mouse button I can set point 0.2. But it's not really um, casting any rays yet, so that's what we actually want to do. So let's change this. Um, for this we need to use the raycast callback as this anonymous person here said, but he didn't know how to use it correctly. So yeah, let's see how we do that. Um, the world dot raycast method is what we use to raycast and as you can see the first parameter is the raycast callback. Let's just keep it as callback and we have to pass in where the ray starts which is point 0.1 and where the ray um, well ends. It doesn't really end it's just a point that lies on the ray so that is point 0.2 um, and yeah now we just have to create this callback. This callback could for example be right here. So ray cast callback callback equals new ray cast callback and there we go import and um, at the uh, unimplemented methods now the first thing um, is this return zero at first why does it return a float and why uh, do we return zero here um, if you hover over the method you can see the documentation which is pretty useful because it says if we return minus one, we ignore this fixture and continue um, to yeah cast the ray. Um, at first, what does this mean? Ignore this fixture. Um, it is it's the the ray cast ray basically starts at point one and goes all the way to point two and basically into infinity. So um, if we ignore the fixture we collide with we go to the next one, <laughs> obviously. So let, let me put that a little bit differently. Um, this report ray fixture method is called multiple times. So if we um, call this raycast method, it may call uh, the report ray fixture method one time, two times, five times, or no times at all, depending on how many fixtures the ray actually intersects with. Um, and if we return minus one, we just say we don't want to uh, yeah, basically uh, do anything with this fixture and we'll just continue to the next fixture that lies on the ray. So report ray fixture will be called again um, passing the next fixture that it collides with uh, in here uh, this parameter. Uh, if we return zero we basically just stop casting the ray so we say like okay that's the one that we found that that's the one that we wanted. You can stop searching for other fixtures that are intersecting with the ray. 
and if we return a one that means um, okay so we got the information of that fixture and of that point and normal and whatever and we would like to continue to the next fixture that intersects with array so I hope that made sense to you um, but it's probably the easiest to simply use it and we'll see what happens so we'll stick with return zero because we are just searching for the first collision um, okay so what do we gotta do we have these collision and normal vector tools up here so what we want to do is we want to set them um, at first collision is pretty easy to set because it's simply the point that we get right here because that's the point um, w w yeah that the ray intersects with a fixture so yeah that makes pretty much sense I think and uh, this normal here um, we can't simply do the same now, we can't just say um, normal dot set normal. At first we have to say it's uh, the box 2D array cast tutorial dot this dot normal because this actually refers to that normal up here and this normal refers to that normal there. So make sure you got this right if you're using with anonymous classes. And we can't just set it to the normal, we also have to add the point because this normal is m is probably saying that in the documentation is um, yeah it's not saying that but it's a relative to the point here so it's just something between 0 and 1 to give you the direction but it's not actually um, the absolute point because a normal is not a point so if you start from this point and go to this point then you have the line that is the actual normal uh, of of this point on the surface of the fixture that we collided with. Uh, I hope you, I don't confuse you with this, but that's how it is. Um, also we have this float fraction here. Um, it's not really very interesting, it's, it's simply saying for example if we have um, if, if well we are using point 1 and point 2 and now if point 1 was 0 and point 2 was 100 and uh, there was a, f a collision at 50 then fraction would be 0 0.5 so it simply um, tells us at which point on the between the two points that we used to specify where the ray is going um, where in percent the collision occurred so I hope that made sense again <laughs> I could quickly visualize it for you so if this is array and yeah it does continue here but um, if this was point 1 and this was point 2 and the collision happened here or more like here then the fraction would be 0 0.5 if it happened over here then it would probably be something like dot 0 0.5 because it's more 2.2 and yeah I think you get it okay great so now, now that that's out of the way um, let's draw the collision and normals basically we just want to draw the normal and we just have to draw another line um, from the collision to the normal because we already have added the collision to the normal inside of here let's see if it works and let's hope it does but I'm pretty sure <laughs> and yep I start here and I go over there and we can see that there is this little uh, yeah line here that's that is actually the normal so if I go over here the normal would be different and on the ball here the normal is always very different um, and yeah so uh, let's see just to make this a little bit more clear what's happening with this return value here so if we return minus one we said we want to ignore this fixture and go to the next but since we are doing this in every case this report ray fixture is called um, we are really not um, we're really just getting the first one so we uh, get the first fixture reported so this gets called for the first time we set this and we return minus one so we stop uh, doing something that 
uh, if we return zero, we just, as we can see here, whoa, 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 what's happening? As we can see here, terminate the ray cast fraction and clip the ray to this point, if that makes much sense to you. And if we return one, it will just be called for everything, but we didn't handle um, getting this uh, re many fixtures reported, so we can always just um, visualize the last collision and the last normal um, that we got reported, and that may be anything. So now, for example, it's not that one, it's this one here. And now if you move this over there, um, it, it would be any of those in between. It's not the last one, because Box2D doesn't always um, report them in the 100% uh, correct order. So as you can see, even though we are checking for all of these fixtures that lie on the ray, um, we are getting this fixture here instead of that fixture over there. Um, and yeah, that's basically how to do ray, ca ray casting. Um, I hope the explanations were not totally confusing. <laughs> and I'll put the code into the description, so there will be a link and you can see this on Bitbucket. Um, Alright, so thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next video.